Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 15 of USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorials. I'm super stoked about this uh, session because it's such an important topic. So we'll go ahead and get right to the high yield question. This is the high yield question, which I promise we'll come back to at the very end of this talk. So this is a 62-year-old female presenting with pain in her right knee that has been getting worse for the last four years. She states that the pain is worse when she walks her dog. Her x-ray is shown below, and what's the correct laboratory profile for this patient? Is the ESR, CRP, and white blood cell count normal? Is it the ESR and CRP normal, but the white count is elevated? Do we have elevated ESR and CRPs, but a normal white count? Or are all three lab values elevated in this patient? Uh, and it's based on this x-ray here of her right knee. And I promise we'll come back to this question at the very end. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about arthritis. And this is going to be a three-part series. So we're going to talk today about the degenerative type of arthritis and by far the most common and the most highly tested on the USMLE in terms of degenerative arthritis is, is osteoarthritis. Okay, this is a, remember, this is a degenerative arthritis. It's not inflammatory. It's not like rheumatoid arthritis or the seronegative spondyloarthropathies or even septic arthritis. Osteoarthritis is something that's degenerative in nature. It typically happens in people as they age, right? Due to wear and tear of the joint. What happens is, is the articular cartilage gets destroyed because of chronic repetitive microtrauma, wear and tear of the joint. Almost all of us will have some form of osteoarthritis as we age, as we become 60, 70 years old, unless you're just very lucky and you have amazing genetics. Most, the vast majority of us will develop osteoarthritis due to wear and tear of the joint. Risk factors, of course, are several, one of which is obesity. Uh, that can certainly accelerate the development of osteoarthritis. Age, much more common in people that are 65 years old, you know, pretty much unseen in people that are 20 years old, unless you have an underlying condition, right, which we'll talk about it. Maybe you've had a fracture around your ankle, and then you get post-traumatic osteoarthritis around your ankle because of that fracture. You may have a genuvarus or a genuvalgus deformity in your knee that leads to arthritis in your knee. But other than that, if you don't have a predisposing condition, you likely will not get arthritis at a young age. Female sex is an important risk factor as well because of you know, the lack of estrogen in the postmenopausal state and estrogen is a protective factor for osteoarthritis. And of course, trauma can lead to osteoarthritis. There's of course a primary and a secondary form. The primary form is idiopathic, no known cause, but the secondary form, of course, you know, if you have an underlying abnormality, like a genuvarus or a genuvalgus deformity, you can develop osteoarthritis. The key here is in the question stem, the pain is going to present after activity. So after walking, running, uh, and it's going to get better when you rest. So after you've run, you take a break for about an hour, the pain around your joints is going to decrease or go away. That's the key. And that's in distinction to morning stiffness, which is the exact opposite problem where you have pain in the morning that gets better as the day progresses. That's seen in inflammatory arthritis, it's like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, seronegative spinal arthropathies. That's not seen in osteoarthritis. And that's a crucial point for everyone who's taking the USMLE to understand. In degenerative arthritis, like osteoarthritis, the pain is exacerbated with activity and after activity. There are no systemic symptoms involved, right? So there's, you know, there's no fever, you know, malaise, anemia, none, there's no systemic symptoms involved in osteoarthritis. All the lab tests are normal. So all those, all those inflammatory markers like ESR, um, you know, white blood cell count, all those things are totally normal in osteoarthritis. I want to show you what a classic radiograph in the knee looks like in osteoarthritis. And I want to focus first on the, lab, the, the more normal lateral femoral tibial compartment of the knee. So this is the lateral femoral condyle. This is the lateral tibial plateau. Notice that the joint space is more or less preserved. We don't see osteophytes, right? We don't see any proliferation of bone. This looks like more or less a normal joint space. But in contrast, if you take a look at the medial femoral tibial compartment, we notice that there's joint space loss. There are some spurs or osteophytes. You see this new bone formation. Those are osteophytes. And even the subarticular bone looks a little bit more dense. We call that subchondral sclerosis. These are all imaging findings of osteoarthritis. Joint space loss, that's asymmetric. Notice that's not involving all compartments of the knee, it's only it's involving preferentially the medial femoral tibial compartment, and you have these osteophytes. Bone proliferation or production of more bone is a hallmark finding, is a hallmark finding of degenerative arthritis. That's the opposite of inflammatory arthritis, is where you get loss of bone in the form of erosion. So when you lose bone, that's an inflammatory process in the form of erosions. When you gain bone in the form of osteophytes, that's a degenerative arthritis, which we're seeing here in the case of osteoarthritis. 
And let's take a look at a hand. So I want to focus at this MCP joint, which is more or less normal. We see that a nice joint space. We don't see osteophytes. We don't see subchondral sclerosis or cystic change. But if we take a look at the PIP joints, notice that there's a lot of joint space loss. There's a lot of increased density at the subchondral bone. We call that subchondral sclerosis. And look at all these osteophytes here, right? All this new production of bone here. We can see that in pretty much all of the PIP joints. We can even see them at the DIP joints as well. So there's a nice, and osteoarthritis characteristically involves the PIP and the DIP joints in the hand. So a very nice example of what osteoarthritis would look like in the hand. Let's take a look at it in the wrist. So let's start here at the third CMC joint, which is totally normal. We see the nice joint space, no bony proliferation in the form of osteophytes, no subchondral sclerosis or cystic change. And let's take a look at the most common place to get osteoarthritis in the wrist, which is the first CMC or the first carpal metacarpal joint between the base of the first metacarpal and the trapezium. Notice that there's a lot of new bone formation in the form of osteophytes, subchondral sclerosis, increased density along the subarticular bone, even some cystic change, subchondral cysts, these lucencies here. Very nice example of what um, osteoarthritis would look like in the wrist. The second most commonly involved joint in the wrist would be the triscaphy between the scaphoid and trapezium trapezoid. It's not that involved here, maybe a little bit of joint space loss, but the hallmark you know, area where it's involved is the first CMC or the first carpal metacarpal joint. Nice example of what osteoarthritis would look like. So the take home points that you must know for the USMLE. So osteoarthritis is a result of mechanical wear and tear from chronic repetitive microtrauma that leads to cartilage destruction. The pain happens with activity. It's not morning stiffness, right? Not like we see in rheumatoid arthritis or the seronegative spondyloarthropathies. It occurs with activity, gets better with rest, no constitutional symptoms. The weight bearing joints are the ones that are gonna be involved. So like the knee, the hip, in the wrist, the first carpal metacarpal joint, maybe the triscaphy joint, and in the hands, the PIP and the DIP joints, as I showed you in the x-rays. And the findings are, you know, the joint space loss is going to be typically asymmetric, like you saw in the knee, right? It involved the medial compartment more than the lateral or even the patellofemoral compartment. Now, inflammatory arthritis is like rheumatoid arthritis result in symmetric joint space loss. So the entire joint space is lost. But in OA, osteoarthritis or degenerative arthritis, is, it's asymmetric joint space loss. The other major difference is you get osteophytes, you get production of more bones in the form of osteophytes, not erosions or loss of bone like we see in inflammatory arthritis. And of course, you get subchondral sclerosis and subchondral cysts. There's, of course, no cure to osteoarthritis, but you can give Tylenol, NSAIDs, possibly intraarticular steroids that can halt you know, the progression of osteoarthritis. Ultimately, if it gets very severe and it limits your function, we can consider a joint replacement end-stage osteoarthritis. So let's come back to this question. This is a 62-year-old female that presents with pain in her right knee that she has been that has been getting worse for the last four years. She states the pain is worse when she walks her dog. Her x-ray is shown below. What is the correct laboratory profile for this patient? Well, first of all, it's an older female. So that's a risk factor for osteoarthritis. The pain gets worse when she walks her dog. So with activity, that's a red flag for osteoarthritis on the USMLE, right? Pain with activity. It's chronic. It's been having this pain for four years. The x-ray is characteristic of osteoarthritis. The medial femoral tibia compartment is more involved, joint space loss, osteophytes, classic example of osteoarthritis. And of course, we know that all laboratory values are normal. There's no inflammation here. So normal ESR, normal CRP, normal white blood count. Hope that was helpful. We'll do another super high yield topic next week. It'll be the arthritis part two of this series. Thank you so much for your attention and I'll see you soon for another high yield USMLE tutorial.